So we're on park there at Forest Lawn Hollywood Hills. Behind this tree right here, the tree ahead of me, I can see the Walt Disney Studios. I can see this huge cone with blue and uh, white stars, and that, that's Mickey's hat. I guess it is. <laughs> and um, also, also you know, there's a water tower there. It has a Disneyland thing on it. Um, I'm like, whoa. So yes, um, that's pretty neat. So yes, I, if I need to say to myself, that's pretty cool. But yes, I'm here at Ford Swan Hollywood Hills for my second visit here at um. Yeah, because first time around, I uh, I didn't come with the game plan. I just came here with the plan to visit here and there, but no actual plan plan. But um, but yes, also, I do apologize here for no video last week um, due to the weather. It was raining here in Southern California, and that's the first. And honestly, we need the rain, and so that's okay. But um, in case you're wondering, yes, I did record, pre recorded a video ahead of time but I decided not to upload because I didn't have enough footage so I just said hey, you know what I'm gonna hold it for now and then when I go back there I'll upload it and you know do his due diligence but yeah so anyhow with that being said I need to go visit the first person here at the uh, the cemetery here I'm gonna go straight ahead make a quick right down the hill and here we go. First up, we're going to find voice actress Mary Kay Bergman. She's in the Summerland section of the cemetery. Best way to find this section is if you just go so from the entrance gate, go straight ahead and make a left. You'll find a little section of niches there in the cemetery, in the middle of the cemetery. Just follow that around uh, the lawn. Make a right. You'll see a trash can there. That's your main hint. When you see a trash can, go up and then right there in the middle next to uh, a tree. Nice shade there. We're going to find Mary Kay Bergman. Mary Kay Bergman. Um, she was one of the original cast members uh, on South Park. Now, according to my notes here, um, real quick, she did voice Leanne Carmen, Shida Brafoski, Shelly Marsh, Sharon Marsh, Karen McCormick, and Wendy Testerberger. So, um, yeah, that's pretty good impressive resume there. Um, also, she was a voice actor, so she did a lot of roles and other stuff. And uh, so, anyhow, so she did suffer from general anxiety and bipolar. And so, um, on November 11th, 1999, um, she was found dead from the gunshot wound, and she decided to take her own life. And so, I guess from the depression and all. Um, I guess got to her, and so she was married. So her husband found her laying on the floor, uh, laying on the floor with her friends. So um, yeah, she was just uh, thirty years old when she passed away. In the enduring faith section of the cemetery is the second lawn from the entrance gate. So if you just go past the first lawn, go to the second lawn, follow it all the way up. I probably say. Probably about the middle section, <clears throat> and you're gonna see a tree. I know, <laughs> I know it seems odd, but you see a tree there, just like a single tree there by itself. And after, if you stop right there, in the, probably in the middle section there, um, and go straight down, you'll see the final resting place of one Christopher Lloyd Dennis. If you don't know who this guy is, this guy here dressed up as Superman on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in Hollywood, California. For a few bucks, this guy would take pictures with people and because he would be dressed up as Superman. And so, um, it was just him, it was him, uh, there's a bunch of characters that people would dress up as, so, but he was probably one of the most popular ones, um, yeah, he did appear on Jimmy Kimmel Live here uh, a few times on late night TV, unfortunately, he passed away at the age of 52, according to my notes here, um, they found him dead in the valley in a donation metal bin box and he was sucking that thing and couldn't get out and so unfortunately uh he passed away at the age of 52. next up we're gonna find former uh nfl pro football player uh christopher mims who was drafted first overall no sorry in the first round 23rd pick overall by the at the time San Diego Chargers. So yes, um, he was a part of the 1994 team that went all the way to the Super Bowl. That team, yes, but it's the Super Bowl and lost to the San Francisco 49ers. 
but unfortunately for Chris here, uh, he played for the uh, Washington Commanders year with the Commanders, and then came back with the Chargers and from '98 to two, uh, nine, nine, a year with the Chargers, and then a year with the Bears in the year 2000, and from there he his career just ended. Um, and so. According to my notes here, um, um, so on October 15, 2008, Mims was found dead in his LA apartment by police officers by conducting a welfare check. And so the cause of death was uh, determined to be a large heart. He weighed at 456 pounds and he was 456, six foot five. So, yeah, he's a pretty, he's a pretty tall dude, but, uh, yes, I guess he just, and he passed away at a young age. That really sucks too. But uh, yeah, former NFL, uh, former NFL pro football player, passed away at a young age. Next up, we're gonna find former bodybuilder Richard Piana. Um, he was an American bodybuilder and YouTuber, by the way. Um, he won uh, Mr. California in 1998 and competed in 2003 and 2009. And he was a bodybuilder. But he did openly admit to using steroids in his career and also having probably one of the most intense pre workout regiments. He would mix a lot of, he mixed, I don't know much about uh, dietary uh, drinks, but he would mix a pretty intense one. Um, but yeah, he was a bodybuilder and so, um, yeah, so I mean, he did have a YouTube career to uh, upload some videos on YouTube uh, explaining how, how how he would do his workout regimen and how he would take these pretty intense workout drinks. And uh, I don't know much about, but they're pretty intense, not gonna lie. And so, um, anyhow, so uh, he passed away in on August twenty fifth, uh, twenty seventeen. But uh, on August seventh, two thousand seventeen, uh, he was getting a haircut and he it collapsed in Clearwater, Florida, and so um, they called the ambulance. Paramedics they didn't have any oxygen in his brain, so he took him to the hospital. And so on August twenty fifth, he passed away at the age of forty six. Up top street railings, it says here a significant heart disease damage. For me, uh, visiting John Ritter um, was probably an emotional one for me because he was probably one of my favorite actors growing up to. And also at the time, um, I watched him in Three's Companies and Eight Simple Rules for t Dating My Teenage Daughter on ABC. Um, that was probably one of the good shows I watched too as a youngster too growing up. And um, so in case you're wondering, according to my notes here, um, to find this final resting place, it's a bit of a tricky one. Not gonna lie. Um, I know if you look for the mural, uh, just park your car right in that section in that area there, and uh, I believe it's the second or second entrance. We walk straight ahead. He's in a corner there next to a wall. He's right there, later rest there in the Court of Liberty section, and so. Yeah, he's just, um, behind that wall there. Look to your immediate left, and he's right there. And so, yeah, visiting John Ritter. Um, yeah, again, he was probably one of, one of my favorite actors growing up, too, as a youngster. And so, just sucks that he passed away such a young age, too, at the age of 40, no, 30, 54. So, yeah. For me, in my opinion, visiting Dr. Jerry Buss, um, well, arguably one of probably one of the best owners in NBA history, winning 10 championships as the owner of the Lakers. And seeing him with the Lakers, only the Lakers making trades and uh, drafting Kobe Bryant and trading for Shaquille O'Neal. And even in the early 80s, drafting Magic Johnson and uh, Byron Scott. James Worthy, the list goes on and on and on. But yes, this is a, a, an honor just to visit Dr. Jerry Buss. Um, man had a passion for sports and was a businessman too. And I mean, I could go on and on about this man's accolades, but there's, 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 a, there's a statue of him right there at the cemetery of him. Um, him holding up the Larry O'Brien trophy at the cemetery. Huh? In case you're wondering where he's uh, later rest at. 
he's in the same section as uh, uh, Paul Walker, too, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, just give me a look at my notes here real quick. I do apologize. Uh, he's in the Court of Liberty section. Same section as John Ritter, obviously, and so, and, uh, Elja Beller, too. Um, so he's uh, like along the wall there. Uh, he can't miss him, too. Just, just he, there's Jerry Buss and his mom there, too. Uh, right next to him, too. In the Court of Liberty section, we have John Singleton, the, the director of many films like Four Brothers, Bad Boy, Boys in the Hood, Too Fast, Too Furious, and Black Stick Ma Moan. Yeah, um, this man directed some of my, some of, I definitely did watch Four Brothers, obviously Boys in Hood, because why not, and Bad Boy too, and Too Fast, Too Furious, um, but I was like, man, this guy directed a lot of movies that I liked too, when I was growing up too, and so, like I mentioned too, he is in the quarter liberty section, um, unfortunately on August, no, I'm sorry, on April 17th, April 17th, 2019, John here suffered a stroke and was placed under intensive care. Unfortunately, he lost his life on, on April 28th, uh, 2019 at the age of 51, passed away at Cedar Side Ice Medical Center. In the peaceful memory section, uh, we're going to find actor Fred Willard. And as you can see by his stone, it says home run. And right next to his wife, Mary, it says kind of Hawaii. <laughs> Even in passing, they can still make a joke. <laughs> still make a joke. Anyhow, Fred Willard here was best known for starting Anchorman and uh, held in Kilmer to White Castle. And so Fred Willard here was, was an actor, and I could probably list the movies I've seen him in, and I honestly, I left every second, every second that I saw him on, on, on screen. And yeah, he passed away on March 15th, 2020 at the age of 86. So right here in the sanctuary of treasure love, if this gate was open and not locked, uh, Michael Clark Duncan would have been to your immediate right, and then Matthew Perry would have been to your immediate left. So I was not able to visit uh, both those gentlemen, but next time, hopefully that gate there will be open naked, and, and obviously, to visit those two guys. Here's something that I didn't know up until like last week. So if you go to the column frame of Radiant Dawn, you walk in, look for the Novak, and then to your immediate right, that would have been Lucille Ball's original final resting place. And then right next to Lucille Ball would have been her mom, Desiree Ball. And so, yeah, in 1991, uh, Lucille Ball passed away. And she was in turn there with her mom, but I guess her children had different plans and they took her mom and uh, Lucille Ball and her mom uh, back to their hometown of Jamestown, New York, where they're now resting in peace. So, yeah, so I had no clue that Lucille Ball and her mom were originally laid to rest, laid to rest right here at Forest Lawn, uh, Hollywood Hills. So that's pretty cool. Best small forwards ever to play four seniors with the Los Angeles Lakers. Elgin Baylor um, played four seniors with the Lakers and then spent 22 years as a GM as the LA Clippers. And so uh, Mr. Baylor here, uh, let's see here. Passed away on March 22nd, 2001 at the age of 86 from natural causes and leaving behind a great legacy and the NBA and also. Well, that's it for today's video. Please don't forget to please like and subscribe. With that being said, you guys be safe out there and I'll see you guys later.